Hi everyone, I am back to the voiceover format and I hope you enjoy this um, different kind of style and do let me know what you think about it because that way I can speed up the video a little bit, only I think two times and so it's not too fast but it means that the actual content becomes a little bit shorter and it seems that a lot of people like to watch videos that are 10 to 15 minutes long. Um, I can't film a 10-15 minute video in real time because it just it kind of feels very rushed for me so I'm more 20 to 25 and lately it's been like 30 minutes as well. So I think this way I can create that content that I need to do but I can speed it up and then do a voiceover separately, guide you through what I'm doing. And um, yeah, I would love to hear what you, your thoughts are, whether you enjoy this um, or whether you prefer a real sort of, um, or, or talking as I'm making it, if that makes sense. So today you will see a very different style, um, something that I am making myself step out of the comfort zone and exploring a little bit more of the art um, aspect of it. So I've been thinking this uh, very kind of trendy way of describing art called mixed media is in fact just sort of art making but it almost feels like the word art is a little bit scary and a little bit too um, sophisticated maybe, I don't know. And then we just started calling everything mixed media. But in fact, it's art, it's creating art, whether it's pens or crayons or whatever it is. Um, it is art. So I decided to do what I usually do is just starting with a doodle. This is the platinum carbon ink and fountain pen in extra fine and so it's waterproof ink so I started kind of like a simple illustration of red currants I have um, taken a photocopy of the book that I showed you before which is what is it called I think the botanical art by q gardens i think it is so anyways yeah um i decided to be inspired by it and create something that is that has different layers of paints and different mediums and i don't want to call it mixed media because it's just art we are so um lucky to have all these different and uh, new art supplies a new in the sense of that they weren't there 10 years or 20 years ago when I was doing art and I wish they were because you could create a lot of interesting things and still call it art you don't need to kind of discount it and call it craft which I think is what a lot of people think of this and it is sad however because calling something craft almost takes away the quality of art if that makes sense and in fact don't see it as craft because you know crafting is seen for for example when you're using the distress oxides that's technically not an art supply it's seen it, it's seen as a craft supply but that's exactly what i mean you don't look at it that way just see it as an art supply and there is nothing wrong with doing a base with watercolors or any other paints that you enjoy using it could be oil paints or acrylics and then mix other mediums but see it as art rather than mixed media i hope that makes sense i have nothing against the word mixed media but i just kind of started thinking of it that when you say mixed media it's sort of discounting your art it's it's making it almost less worthy and more amateur like which is really not the case so you can learn a lot by integrating different art supplies so here i've just done um a little red current uh illustration just quite simple with watercolors and now 
I want to go further and create something like a visual texture. So I'm going to use to use crushed olive, which is a distress oxide by Tim Holtz, and it's a beautiful color. So it separates or oxidizes into uh, different, well, different. It's it's mainly kind of two colors that it sort of sometimes have these milky speckles so someone um, from my subscribers has asked me what is the difference between distress oxide and the uh, distress uh, inks the previous one has is like a dye ink and the distress oxide is a pigment ink which um, comes off as a very milky um, type of an ink and then the other one is more transparent and so the color is then affected so he has what well, tim holtz has for example crushed olive on the other uh like the pistachio i forgot the color let me just look it up it's right here next to me cracked pistachio um, these are the the traditional the classic colors that were first created with the distress um inks and so they were then repeated in the distress oxide even though they're the same colors they look different because one is a dye and the other one is a pigment so here we go all i've done is just added um, a little bit of that distress oxide onto a packaging which has that um, thin plastic and um, i recommend to keep uh, these somewhere in your art studio because you can always use them and you don't need to find uh, a tool to do it for you so it's uh, just reusing and recycling uh, things that we have which is a good idea anyway um, so yeah I'm saving a bit of that ink because I just love it that distress oxide is just a dream come through I haven't used or haven't tried the uh, spray bottles i kind of don't like the idea of spraying it i prefer this technique a lot just to um, stamp the the pigment onto the packaging and then spraying with water and then kind of just moving it around so you can see i've used two colors there the other color was uh, i think it was fossilized amber and then once i have dried the two colors and they look nice but you can see i want to bring in bring in a different color that will kind of start um picking through so that's the idea of using different mediums is you want that interest you want your eye to be interested in seeing the finished result but then these little bits around the page that might get extra interest so here i was auditioning a couple of colors and i couldn't decide at first i thought to maybe use the crushed pistachio but that kind of seemed a little bit too bright so i decided to go for an orange and the orange i went for is the spiced marmalade it's the kind of more of the um, true bright orange and um the the one below is i believe wild honey and i decided to go to go for the top one which i just said is the spiced marmalade so same thing again going over onto the packaging spraying it a little bit with water you can see how beautifully milky it is and it's just just that already has lifted it and made it so much more interesting but make sure when you do this technique um, to set off colors one against the other you do need to dry the coats of this um, distress oxide so that they don't blend into one another but they actually sit on top of each other if that makes sense and to me that just kind of makes it so much more beautiful and interesting so this was the first thing and then I have a bunch of pens sitting right next to the sketchbook and there's a bunch of different things so I have um, 
the Jumbo Pencil by Koa Moore. This one has like three different colors. I think this was the um, tropical color. And I am just scribbling away. That's all I'm doing. Just scribbling because you don't need anything specific there. It's just to build upon the visual texture. The more layers there are, the more different textures and colors and mediums, the more interesting it becomes. So here I have uh, become quite fond of this new technique of the Derwent graphic um, liners where the more you push in the nib the more kind of ink comes out and it comes out in a nice drop like a blob and so you can just touch it onto the paper if it doesn't uh, fall out by itself which usually it does spontaneously but I decided to kind of help it a little bit and then you can have a nice blob of that um, ink or whatever it is, pigment ink, and then just use the nib or the tip of the uh, liner and just move it a lot, um, around a little bit just to create again a few little shapes and in a way like doodles and puddles and then I'm using, so the orange one is a really good color, I really like it, it's called, uh, let's see, it's called Tom and the yellow one, I'm just going to check what that is called. It's called Brick Brick Road. Not too fond of the yellow. It's not like my favorite type of yellow. But um, it kind of worked well because of the color scheme on this page. And so then I went back onto the um, uh, Koai Moore Jumbo Pencil in Tropical. And then just highlighted some of these uh, leaning on the leaves and foliage. And then, of course, I couldn't do without gold. So I went and picked up my Uniball Signo in Broad and created doodles um, on top of the berries. So again, that gives them a little bit more interest. There you go. You can see that as you tilt the paper. And also did a little bit of adding of that gold throughout the little bits and pieces. Again, just to give some highlights in a way to this piece. And I think that was pretty much it. Oh yeah, the mini tiny little polka dots finished it off for me. And just moving it out onto the paper from the background uh, of the distress exercise and just kind of applying it in three areas to connect it and again that just sort of finishes things out nicely and i really enjoy the process i hope you enjoy this too and thanks for watching and see you soon